Hello ladies and gents, in this video we will export our application metadata from the component.js file to a new manifest.json file and this will help us to separate the application coding from the configuration settings. So let's start by creating a new file under our web app folder named manifest oops new file manifest.json and the name is not up to us it has to be manifest.json and as for the contents we begin by a property named version and you see that I already get some auto completion because of the extensions we have installed in the first video so if you missed it I suggest uh, going back and watching that first video which I talk about setting up the development environment so the version of the descriptor file and it should uh, contain the version which corresponds to the UI5 version we are using and which is 1.114.0 and there is a web page actually that we can check which version corresponds to that I will share the link also in the description and if we scroll down to our version 114 we see that the version we should use for our descriptor file is 114.0 so let's copy that we go back and paste this next we have a namespace called sap.app and first attribute here is the id which should contain the namespace of our application as you know it's ui5.product.list next is the type and as you can see we have four options application card component and library in our case it's application and next one is called i18n which is just the path to our uh, properties file and as you know it's under this folder named i18n and then it's called i18n.properties now it is enough to just point to this uh, default properties file but still I'm going to delete these other ones to avoid confusion delete okay and here next we have a title attribute which we will put into our uh, i18n file so it will be a binding we need to use double curly braces here and let's name it app title and very similar one called description and I will call this app description and lastly for this namespace we have application version now this is up to us and since this is the very first version of our application I'm just going to call it 1.0.0 and next another namespace we have is sap.ui and here we have the attribute technology and obviously we are going with UI5 here and another one named device types And here we need to list the devices that are supported by our application and the options we have are desktop, tablet and phone. All true by default but let's list them here anyway. So we set desktop to true, tablet to true and lastly phone to true. And another namespace sap.ui5 oops sap. UI5 and as for attributes here we begin by root view remember we have already set this in our component.js file it's the view name is this the path to our view I will actually copy this and this root view attribute is an object we begin by view name and I just paste the path to our view the next one is called type and since we are using XML views 
this is set to XML. Next, we have the dependencies. And these will be the UI5 libraries that our app needs to run. We begin by the minimum UI5 version here. And I'm just going to set it to our current version without the patching number, so it's 1.114. You can and should set this to a lower value if you're not using something that has been introduced with just this version. Because if you really require this version, you have to be sure that uh, on the infrastructure that your app is running, let's say on SAP Cloud, this version has to be installed on your environment as a minimum. And next one is called libs. And these are the libraries that our application needs to run. First, of course, we need the SAPUI core library. And as the value, we just put in an empty object. And as you know, we also need the mobile library. So sap.am, also an empty object here. And what else? After dependencies, we have something called content densities. I will explain this briefly in a second. I will set compact to true and also cozy to true. Now what these are is that uh, basically different UI layouts, uh, not layouts, but sizes for our application. So what Compact will do is when we have a bigger screen like a desktop, it's going to display smaller controls so we can display more stuff on our screen. And what Cozy will do is for touch screens and smaller screens, it's going to display larger inputs and controls so it's easier to touch basically. Okay, and lastly we have models. And these will be the models that will be instantiated when the app starts. And here we define the local resource bundle. Remember, we created it again in component.js file here. And we begin with the name. We named it i18n, so let me copy this. And then, you know, we also need to pass in a bundle name. I will also copy this. But before we do that, uh, we have to specify the type first. Actually, let me also copy that first. So remember, it was coming from this dependency. Let me paste it and replace all these slashes with dots. And next is the bundle name. I will copy it again. And how we do it in manifest.json is we have a settings attribute here, which is an object. And in here we have the bundle name and I just paste it. Now, before we forget, let's add our title and description to our i18 and file. I will do it at the top here. For the title, let's just say products. And for the description, let's say a simple product list with UI5. Now we have a few changes to implement in our index.html file. First one being is to change this part here. And instead of pointing to our index.js file, we will point to sap slash UI slash core slash component support. And this way, our component will be instantiated by UI5 automatically instead of programmatically in the index.js file that we used to do before. Now for that to work, UI5 will look for an HTML div element with the attribute data sap UI component and insert our component in there. So let's go ahead and create that as well. Inside our body tags, I create a div element here. And the first mandatory attribute is data sap UI component. Now UI5 is going to find this div with this attribute and then insert our application container into here. And another mandatory attribute here is data-name, 
which is going to be our namespace and it's ui5.product.list and then we have two optional parameters first one is data-id let's set it to container and second one is named data-settings which is an object so let's use single quotes and we can have an id attribute here and let's set it to ui5.demo so these two uh, optional ones are for just uh, better prettier global ids for our html elements in the dom and they are not mandatory but it's uh, better to have for debugging purposes it's just easier if you prefer now let's go ahead and update our component.js file now we have this configuration in our descriptor file so i remove this and say manifest json and this is going to automatically pick up our descriptor file here and then apply the configuration and we also have our i18n model in the descriptor file so i've also removed this along with the dependency we save it and like i said we don't need this index.js file anymore so let's remove it okay and if we have done everything correctly our app still should work as before let's go back and check looks like it's working and now if we take a look at this div element here for example we can see that it's assigned an id container and some data settings as we specified in our uh, html file now let's go back and remove those optional parameters here save and now if we check our divs we see more random ids like this one underscore underscore container zero etc so all these attributes do is just create prettier global ids for our application so i will leave them here and that would be all for this video in the next section we will talk about ui5 tooling and i hope to see you there